Hello, everyone. It's been a moment. What I would like to show you all today is the upcoming uh, Ciro 1.4. The version that I'm using here is 1.3.4, but this has, <clears throat> because it's a development, unstable development version, they, they will uh, use lower numbers until they're comfortable and they can come out with 1.4. I expect 1.4 to be out shortly. Uh, I'm not quite sure what shortly means, but I've, I've got a good feeling based on how I've been able to uh, use this version. Um, I have not had any game stoppers using this version. Uh, in fact, I have been using this version for uh, the last two or three weeks and uh, have really been enjoying it because it, stuff is now in locations that make sense. <laughs> so what I would like to do is just kind of show you some of these changes so that uh, you can get a little bit excited about what's coming and uh, give you a heads up on where all these changes are coming to. So the first thing we'll go to is uh, the hamburger and you will notice that there's a menu item missing and I think it was called image processing. And you would have to click into that uh, to get into some additional features that you could run on, on your data. Well, that's now gone and it's all located in the tools. So all of those, all that stuff is now located here, finally. <laughs> and it just makes more sense that it's here. Another thing that, uh, if I open up the preferences, this window hasn't changed much. This one hasn't changed much. The astrometry, window is pretty much the same. Preprocessing has added master distortion and I'm not quite sure what this is yet. I think it has something to do with the uh, spectrophotometric color calibration, but I'm not sure. Uh, photometry is basically the same. Uh, this is where you can change the size of your aberration inspector window. Uh, user interface is the same. Now color management, this is a biggie. A lot of stuff has changed in color management. And <clears throat> it is going to be uh, a good thing that somewhere down the line we'll get a little more information on how to exactly use all this stuff but to be able to go to change your work your color workspace is going to be huge scripting this is going to be an area that people will be jumping up and down for uh, my version does not have it just yet but what we do see is that now all of those extra scripts that are located on the web, when you click on the, the get script thing here, are now shown here. And then you can pick and choose the one you want to use. And they will show up in your script list. The feature that is not in this is Python. So this is an image that they have on their Twitter account that shows uh, SETI Astro's statistic stretch being run through Python. And this is basically the way I understand this. This is the 
PixInsight script that you can you run the same script in PixInsight and it will give you basically the same little window and it will run a statistical stretch just like it was in PixInsight. This is going to be huge, boys and girls, mainly because this is going to extend the capability of Cyril to new heights. And it, it will be able to add more functionality to Cyril, Cyril very quickly. Think of it as uh, very similar to, uh, this is my, my call on this. I think of it as uh, like a plugin interface, except it's using Python scripts to add that that plugin functionality. It's it's just going to be great. So, I'm my thinking is that based on what I've been seeing, that uh, most, if not all, of those Python or I'm sorry, most if not all of those scripts that are available for Pix Insight will be able to be run in Cyril. That's huge. <laughs> that is freaking huge. So what I would like to show right now, well, I'll get, I'll just run through this. This is the same. Now, uh, Grassford is now integrated within uh, Cyril in a similar way that StarNet++ is. So you got to have the, the Grassford local to your machine and then you point to it. So I'm just going to load up an image. And this was, uh, I'm going to overstretch it and I'm just going to do something like this. We'll crop it. Whoops. And you can see that I've got some hor horizontal banding, so I'm going to go and take care of that. That's in filters. Banding reduction, they're vertical, so I'm going to do that. And boom, gone. So now I'm just going to go to, into auto stretch, and we're going to jump. And this would be basically like the start of my workflow. So I'm going to jump right into Grassford. I'm going to bring down my smoothing factor because there's very little gradient in this at all. And this is the the current beta build of uh, Grassford, which includes the deconvolution, AI deconvolution. Uh, I have not played much with that yet. Uh, and I'm not going to do any denoising that that uh, you all know how that works. So what we can see is currently this image has, has no location data. And you can see that by uh, the annotator and the uh, celestial grid. If I click on, it won't allow me to click on that. So what we have to do is go to tools, astrometry, and we're going to plate solve it. And this is where I can pick the serial solver, serial solver, and this goes out to the web. Or the astrometry.net local solver, I'm going to pick that and we're just going to say OK. And you can see it works very well. So now what I want to do is uh, because I color corrected, or I'm sorry, because I plate solved, which you can see, I get the uh, and a, the the, the uh, object names and stuff. I can now go into color calibrate, which these two would have been ghosted if there was no plate solve information, because these two need to have location data because it's looking to. Uh, add color to stars and basically color correct the whole image and it needs to know where it is to do that. Now the uh, stereo photometric color calibration is uh, new and you can pick the white point based on many types of things, stars, galaxies. Now this, the list is large
uh, you get one shot or mono. And this is where you would pick your sensor. This is a 410, IMX 410 industrial, but I would use an IMX 410, which is not in the list. And then you pick your filter. And I happen to be using an L Pro for this, I believe. I can't remember. <laughs> you can go with atmospheric corrections. There's all kinds of good data here. But because I don't have the right sensor and possibly the right filter, I'm not going to do this one. And I'm going to go and select the photometric color calibration. And if I click on the drop down here, I now have the Gaia database. And the Gaia database, in my opinion, is currently the best one as far as color. So I'm going to say OK. And you can see it's made some changes, all for the better. Stars look good. Now, what I want to do is I, I, uh, I kind of think I have some stars that are possibly, oops, oversaturated. So I'm going to go into image analysis. Oh, well, before I do that, I'll show you my aberration inspector. Not too bad. The oops, tilt. Now, you don't ever want to do tilt on a stack. You want to do tilt on a sub that makes up the stack. Uh, and the show distortions, I think that would come from the stereo, stereo, stereo photometric color data, which I don't have. So we're going to go to dynamic PSF. I'm going to pick Moffitt and select some stars. And you can see anything with purple around it is oversaturated. I'll close this. I'm going to go to my star processing and I'm going to desaturate the stars. And, oops, go back to my image analysis, dynamic PSF. And if I run that again, you will see that the purple goes away, except for this one. And that's okay. I can deal with one star. Uh, color management, image information. So it, this is the focal length of the scope, the uh, pixel size, the binning. Um, can't remember where. Noise estimates. There's your noise estimates here. Image analysis, statistics. So you got your mean for each channel. Max and min, just all kinds of good data. Now down here we have some more uh, image image validation tools, and uh, this would bring up the color management if you want to mess with color management. Uh, this tool here, uh, it's a color. I'm just going to draw a line like so. Do this. There we go. And apply it. And we now get a chart that shows the intensity of the stars through that line. And then the color of those stars through that line. So that there's just some cool stuff that are not that's now available from within uh, Cyril. Uh, one thing that I have been finding that after you do a color calibration, uh, whether you're using the, um, oops, the uh, spectrophotometric color calibration or the photometric color calibration, is that you very 
rarely, if ever, need to use Remove Green anymore. In fact, if, if you do use Remove Green, you'll get this. It just wax out the colors. <laughs> and, and I have been noticing that my colors are much nicer now than what they have been. And that's uh, mainly to do with the color engine in Cyril has been uh, upgraded immensely. Still have your pixel math, you still have your composition. This would be uh, where you're adding back in your, you know, if you separated out your channels to do some work on them, you can do, you can either use pixel math to do that or the RGB composition, compositing, I should say. Um, your match, this is where you would do your channel splits. Uh, geometry, these are all, I mean, it just, the stuff makes sense now. It, 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 it's easy to find. It just so, is so much nicer. So I can't wait uh, until uh, Cyril releases for 1.4, mainly for the uh, scripts, the Python scripting. That's going to be huge, and uh, it's going to take Cyril to the next next level, and it will be able to be expanded quickly because of that. So we live in a, a wonderful time of uh, hardware and software, and uh, when you consider that Cyril is free <laughs> and that uh, any of those free scripts that are available available for picks like the SETI Astro stuff, those will all be able to function uh, very well from within Cyril. So we have uh, some wonderful stuff coming. It'll be a great Christmas, no hints. So I would like to, uh, on my next video, I wanna show uh, some of the SETI Astro standalone programs that I've been playing with, uh, those things have, uh, it's basically the same uh, script that is being used in PixInsight, but as a standalone application. So uh, just a good time to be alive in, in the uh, hobby of astronomy. So look for that one uh, sometime either next week or the week after. And then uh, it's my hope that I'll, I, the weather's just been terrible around here. I can't even do solar. The sun's too low to do solar. And I'm, I'm in my cloud, 24 seven cloud crap again. So for those that do have skies, I would like to wish you all clear skies and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.